Welcome to a Thanksgiving classic where Leona Dooley and I discuss all things Thanksgiving. All right, so we want to welcome those who have jumped on. And please give Leona a warm welcome. Now, Leona, I'm sure you have already started your to-do list for Thanksgiving. I have. Doing it day by day. A little bit by little bit, but everything done in advance. Okay. I've been thinking about a few things myself, including what I need to do to get the house ready and what I need to pick up at the grocery store for a Thanksgiving dinner. But before we get into it, let me just say this video is brought to you by Apron Diva. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. Visit us at www.aprondiva.com. All right, so Leona, what's the first thing that you do to start your holiday preparation? Oh, goodness. I have to make a list. I have to do a checklist. And, you know, those a list really helps you to commit to what you're doing. And uh, plus it helps you stay on track. So for me at my age and all the things that have to be done, I need a list. <laughs> well, and you know what? I need a list too. And I, I start out my holiday preparation as well with a list. And what I will do is I get my planner out, I get out a notebook, and then I just kind of sit down at the table and I just think about what is it that I need to do, who's coming to the house, especially when I'm thinking about getting the house ready because the mm -hmm. dinner, you know, we do the same dinner every year in my family. So it's like my mom would always say, well, what are we having? And I'm like, mom, we've had the same thing for since I was born. So it's like, you know what we're having. <laughs> but so I don't stress so much over that. But I, I do work at trying to get the house ready if company is coming. And so I'll sit down at the table and I'll make a list and I'll think about who's coming. And then if both of my children that live out of state are coming with their families, then I have to think about well, where are they going to sleep? Where are the girls going to be? Where am I going to put CJ? Where am I going to put the two couples? And that kind of thing. So I think about those kinds of things. This is the question that I wanted to ask you that I was thinking about because I watched your November video, Building an Emergency Food Supply, mm -hmm. and One Month, One Plan. And you do your one month, one plan, one shop every year, every month. But this time you're doing two shops. Mm -hmm. But you talked about making or prepping some things ahead. Can you talk about that? Yes. And, you know, I, I think prepping ahead is probably the best thing that I ever learned over time. And, um, and what it does is that it enables us to take care of those things like onions and celery that you know you're going to use a ton of, and you're going to use it pretty much in just about every mm -hmm. dish. And uh, when you have company coming, you may not have time to do all the prepping. So because of that, if you have your onions, your celery, your carrots, your green peppers, all those things already in, in, and I do it in a variety of forms. So I have some sliced, some diced, some finely diced. And uh, what that does, and I just package them separately. So I can just go to the freezer, pull out what I need and use it in whatever dish it may be necessary to have it in. Also, uh, in that same video, I talked about the one pot meal. Uh, particularly when you have company and uh, as you know, with our situation as uh, we have today, we aren't as comfortable going into restaurants. And so because of that, I planned for everybody to eat at the house. And so with that, uh, I've also planned what those dishes are going to be. And everybody's here for about four days. Mm -hmm. So I know every day, of course, you know, Thanksgiving day is going to be the traditional, but the other days I already have meals that are in the freezer that all I have to do is take them out, put them either into a couple of crock pots or um, into the oven mm -hmm. and they are ready to go. 
and they're planned in such, I even did the cornbread in advance. And so I can just take it out, wrap it up in some foil, put it into the, into the oven and we're ready to go. And okay, so now when you put these different cut up things up mm -hmm. ahead of time, like you're your own sous chef. So do you have like little baggies you put them in? Do you have small containers? Because if you're putting them in baggies, how do you know which size is which? How do you mark those? Okay. Um, I, I get my um, Ziploc bags from Amazon, actually. And uh, they have this massive box of like 100 Ziploc bags, whether, you know, freezer bags that is um, both the quart size as well as the gallon size. And it has a place where you can write whatever it is. Okay. Now, what I have found is that it's not hard. I just put sliced onions or diced onions or whatever it is. And when I freeze it, I freeze it flat on like a cookie okay. sheet. And then that way, when I put it into the, the freezer, it stands like a book. So it doesn't take up a lot of space mm -hmm. once it's in there, because to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of room in the freezer. So I had to really come up with a way to organize it, to keep that going. And I do that even with the dishes. I freeze them flat mm -hmm. so that they can go right into the pan that they're going to be cooked in. That's a great idea. I would sometimes, maybe a couple of days before or the day before, I would like chop up the onions, the celery, the carrots, that kind of stuff for, this, for the dressing and mm -hmm. put it in a bowl and cover it. But mm -hmm. you're chopping that up and freezing it several days in advance. That just saves so much time. I like that. And then um, Tam says she loves how organized you are. She really enjoys your grocery planning and meal prep and um, everything for the kitchen. So, yes. So I'm glad that we're doing that. And then Debbie Joe agrees mm -hmm. that that's really a great idea. And I started doing that the last few years, but just a couple of days before. But I like the mm -hmm. idea of like a week ahead. You'll just go ahead and chop all that stuff up and then it's ready. So and even Absolutely. the cornbread. Now, is this the cornbread for the dressing or the cornbread you're going to be eating? I do it for the for both. Oh. I do. I have I have one bag that is for I usually do the cornbread for the dressing like in one big slab mm -hmm. so I can kind of break it up mm -hmm. and uh, I take that out early so that if there's any moisture, it has a chance to dry out before I get ready to actually put the dressing together. And I have over over a couple of years actually totally prepared the dressing other than cooking and adding the egg and actually put everything all together, put it into the, into the Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer. Great. And so then when you put everything together, you're not putting in the onions and the celery and all that, are you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really? You put everything in there, but the eggs every, and the, ev and the, every. the, the mm -hmm. ingredients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, everything great. but the egg. Mm -hmm. Are you people hearing this now? She makes her dressing a couple, maybe a week or so ahead. A week. Mm -hmm. Everything in the freezer. And she puts everything in it except for the eggs. So there's no wet ingredients in that. So the mm -hmm. celery, the onions, whatever she's putting in it is all in there. Mm -hmm. That is a genius idea. Now, I've never thought to do that. I like that yeah. idea. Yeah. It would save so much time. Gail Luker says, she loves your channel, but oh, whenever she does celery, it turns brown and softens within a week. Any thoughts, or should she just freeze them right away? Hmm. Freeze it immediately. Immediately. As soon as you finish cutting it, put it into the freezer bag and straight into the freezer. I really have not had any problem with it browning. So a uh, cat wants to know what is my Thanksgiving side dish and dessert? I, not mine, our. So my favorite Thanksgiving side dish is um, the uh, stuffing, the dressing, I should say, and cranberry sauce. Like I've got to have turkey with a, a, a big pile of dressing. And then you've got to have a big lump of cranberry sauce right there beside <laughs> it. And I like the whole berry cranberry sauce with yeah. a little bit of gravy on the dressing. And then my favorite dessert at Thanksgiving and Christmas is our family favorite fruit salad. It's a family recipe that we only give to new brides and uh, we only make it at Thanksgiving and Christmas. So what's yours? Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Well, my favorite, of course, is the turkey itself. And I can eat 
turkey alone. But I need a little side of some cranberry sauce. And I do like the whole berry. But now for dessert, I want an apple cobbler. Oh, my goodness. An apple cobbler with a little vanilla ice cream on it. Mm, I'm done. Ready to go to bed. Go to sleep. <laughs> now that sounds pretty good. Somebody was asking, what is your YouTube channel name? And I forgot to mention it's, that. It's Ebony, Ivy, and Time with Leona Dooley. Cal says, if she only knew how to make dressing. Cal, I've got a recipe, two videos up to show you how to make my famous cornbread dressing. One of them, I'm doing chicken and dressing. And then I do another one where I just show you how to do the cornbread dressing. I'll link that in the description box below. But I've got my Thanksgiving 101 playlist linked in the description box. And I've got Leona's Thanksgiving 2020 playlist mm -hmm. linked in the description box. So you guys check out both of those and we got you covered. Leona shows you how to make rolls and all kinds of stuff. I haven't done that quite yet. Gail wants to know, do either of us give a basic cornbread recipe by the end of the show? And is it true the worst cornbread makes the best dressing? I do have a basic cornbread recipe and it is mm -hmm. in... I'll link that video in the description box. Leona, what about you? I have mine under uh, Skillet Cornbread. That's the name of the video. That's mine too. And, <laughs> and it is in the Thanksgiving playlist. And I have that listed in my description box. But I'll also put it in the community tab so that uh, you can get to it. Pam says she likes sweet potato casserole and pumpkin roll. What is a pumpkin roll? We haven't heard of that. But Mex, Mickey Blue Skies said she's going to make sweet potato casserole or something this year instead of her regular sweet potato. So we'll have to see how that goes. Well, it just so happens in, in the recipes that I'm going to uh, make available, there is a uh, sweet potato casserole in there. Oh, so great. I've got it all right here, sweet potato casserole, as well as the traditional greens and macaroni and cheese. All right, ladies. So now, look, we're going to have to have a battle for the mac and cheese because I am the macaroni and cheese maker. I have the best mac <laughs> I love it, love it, love it. My sister-in-law loves it, and she says she's going to give the recipe card to all her daughters. She's three daughters, mm -hmm. and she said she makes it every year. But... um. Since we're talking about this, Leona and I each have a printable that we're going to give you guys. And Leona, mm -hmm. Leona's printable, well, tell them about it, Leona. Well, I am in the process of finishing up a Holiday Favorites cookbook, and it's going to be an ebook. And I'm not quite finished with it. I still have a couple of things that I need to tweak, but. I thought we'd pull out those things that I know you're going to need for Thanksgiving or might like to have for Thanksgiving. So um, all you have to do is send me an email. I've got some sides and a dessert. Oh, man, this dessert is wonderful and uh, that you will want to have. So just shoot me an email and I will send it to you happily so that um, you will have some, something else to add to your repertoire of Thanksgiving goodies. So uh, Hard Hustle Mom, hello. I think it's Candace is her name. This is the one that just had a little one about six or eight months ago. She'll be making greens for Thanksgiving tomorrow and then freezing them. That's a good idea. You were talking it about is. that in your video. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, I definitely do. When I get my greens, I, I clean them and I cook them, do all the cooking to them. Then I portion them into gallon sized bags, freeze them because I do enough greens for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I do them all at one time so that uh, I can save myself. Let me ask you this, Leona, and I'm going to uh -huh. ask the chat, and then you can answer once I ask the chat. So people in the chat, what is the number one mistake most new homemakers make when they make their first turkey? When they roast their first turkey, what's the number one biggest mistake they make? Tell me what you think it is. Put it in the chat. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Oh, I better not sing that song because I just got to see an answer. 
I don't see an answer. Not yet. yet. They must be thinking. Yeah. What's the number one mistake most new homemakers make when they roast a turkey? <laughs> oh, I see. Fly Lady Cat got it. She got it. That's it. Yeah. They don't remove the giblets. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They don't remove the giblets. And there are so many people that have stories about when they made their first turkey <laughs> and they put it on the table and they cut into it. And then here they got all this frozen giblets and stuff in the center. And my youngest son says that his mother-in-law told that, that same story about her first turkey. So yeah, when you're roasting a turkey, people, if you've not done one before, once you've thawed out, there is a neck cavity and there's something in there. And then mm -hmm. there's a pelvic cavity and there is a whole little bag of uh, uh, giblets mm -hmm. and gravy mixture and other stuff that's down in there. So Matriarchs matter. Um, she has a good response as well. Not thawing it early enough. I, I've done that mm -hmm. early on. Absolutely. Tracy Goodlow said the same thing too, not thawing it out completely. Mm -hmm. And um, Megan says undercooked, not Megan, Candace says undercooked. Mm -hmm. And then Doris says cook it too long. Actually, one of the, it's not cooking too long. The number one issue is they don't get the giblets and they don't get those innards out. That's what they mm -hmm. don't think to do. Um, but probably another big one is, um, don't you this one's funny. I had never heard of that one. Hmm. Okay, so Lenny, I'm not sure what you mean by that. First of all, uh, I was going to ask Leona if do you wash your turkey, Leona? Yes, <laughs> I rinse it well. Okay. Yes, and in fact, uh, before I put it into its brine, I give it a good scrub, and I know officially now they say you shouldn't do that mm -hmm. but when i first learned how to prepare a turkey and my mother for as long as i can remember that turkey got washed now not with dish soap but she would take salt and put salt all over it and rub that salt all over that turkey really really good mm -hmm. and then rinse it well and uh but i hadn't heard of the, the, the dish soap I had not heard of the dish soap with the turkey. I always just rinsed mine in the sink. Mm -hmm. But um, it is thought to be best practice not to wash or rinse the turkey. Mm -hmm. The uh, Health and U.S. Department of Health and Human Services recommends that when you get ready to prepare your turkey, thaw it out appropriately. Now, let's talk about how you thaw the turkey, number mm -hmm. one. So to thaw the turkey you want to thaw it out in the refrigerator. So depending mm -hmm. upon how large a turkey you have, for every five pounds, you need to keep it in the refrigerator a day. So if you've got a 15 pound turkey, it needs to be in the refrigerator three days. So mm -hmm. anywhere from three to five days, you're gonna put that bird in the refrigerator out of the freezer and let it thaw out. Well, why is that? They want you to let it thaw that way because thawing out gradually minimizes the chances of bacteria growing in that turkey so that you don't end up with food poisoning. Mm -hmm. If you miss that window and some people will forget to thaw it out, they forget to put it in the fridge. So then you have to thaw it out quickly and you can put it in your sink, your kitchen sink with mm -hmm. water, cover it with water, cold water, not hot water, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. cold water. And every 30 minutes, keep replacing that water until it thaws out. So you can do that. Um, don't put it in hot water, though, because that allows the bacteria to grow a lot quicker. Absolutely. That, kind of thing. That, that is a point. And also keep your Clorox tube handy, because when you finish, you're going to need to totally sanitize that area because of the bacteria with the turkey. Exactly. I have a Clorox uh, kitchen cleanup that I use mm -hmm. when I'm doing that. And you guys have seen me use that on videos before. And um, I didn't think to bring that up tonight to, to show that. But yeah, uh, let's see what else. So so there is that. Um, how large a turkey should people buy? Well, 
I, when I'm normally serving a large group, I never have less than a 30 pound turkey. Ooh. And uh, yeah, we, we get the biggest they will have. But then as time went by, my son usually does a turkey as well. So we end up with two turkeys because of the side of the group. Uh, so average about 20, 15 to 20 pounds for uh, an average family. If you're going to have about 15 people, a 20 pound turkey should do it. Yeah. And you know what? You're going to have other things to eat. Like we'll have turkey mm -hmm. and then we'll also have a ham. Mm -hmm. And then if my one son is here, we'll also have some salmon for him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my husband will fry some fish. So, mm -hmm. but if you need like more than 20 pounds of turkey, one of the things that my friend Mary at Mary's Nest suggested was to get two mm -hmm. small turkeys. And I thought, oh, what a good idea. Because you can get mm -hmm. two smaller ones in the oven a lot mm -hmm. easier than like, you know, a really huge one. So that's, that's true. And then Shell made a good point, which is mm -hmm. from a food safety standpoint, the water splashes everywhere, which can cause cross contamination. That is why the authorities that know say don't wash your turkey and not just don't wash your turkey. Don't wash your chicken. Don't wash. Absolutely. Your Cooking mm -hmm. is considered your kill step. So when you mm -hmm. cook it, the germs are considered to be killed in cooking. But I'm old school. I still wash mine. But. Best practice is don't wash your turkey. Well, Nefertiri says she doesn't know who the great they are, but clean any food product that you can. Just clean your cooking area thoroughly. Well, the they that I'm talking about is the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services mm -hmm. or the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Those are the they, you know, they're the mm -hmm. experts that do the research studies on all of this. So. They're the ones that help us to establish best practice from a community health perspective so that we don't end up with food poisoning. So, so yeah. That's true. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Ronnie says she sometimes buy two smaller turkeys. Oh, and have double legs and wings. Ooh. That's good idea. Well, that's a good idea. Be sure to check out my Thanksgiving 101 playlist where I show you how to roast a turkey how to make turkey and gravy, how to make candy sweet potatoes, how to make holiday green beans, and so many other things you just may want on your Thanksgiving table. So now Bev said she's going to be cooking a pan of turkey wings. You got any tips for her, Leona? She's just going to have small dinner for three. Oh, well, you know what? The last time I prepared turkey wings, now we will do turkey wings like on a Sunday and uh, a small dinner for three. And I like really treating those uh, turkey wings almost like our little small chicken wings where it's so that you can end up with a nice crunchy skin and nice brown and golden mm -hmm. and the meat is juicy and uh, wings are delicious. Turkey wings are delicious. How do you think so yours? Um, I typically just put my same seasonings with garlic powder. Um, I'll, I'll, sometimes I will actually brine them, but um, most of the time I just, you know, do a general uh, salt, pepper, paprika, little uh, poultry seasoning. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I'll wrap them in a pan and for about the last 25 minutes, that's when I'll uncover them and let the skin crisp because I, I think that's important. Do you brine your turkey? Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about yours first or you want me to go ahead? Well, I will brine my turkey and sometimes I will buy a prepackaged brine season mm -hmm. uh, kit. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, I or I just bought one at Kroger, and it was really, really good. It did a great job, and I really mm -hmm. liked it. But I typically will make my own. Mm -hmm. I will, like I will get a really. I've got this really huge pan that I use for uh, canning stuff in, mm -hmm. and I'll put in, you know, like a couple gallons of water, well, more than a couple, but water, and then the salt. But I also like to put in some apple cider. Uh, onions and bay leaves and um, black peppercorns. Mm -hmm. Martha Stewart always talks about putting juniper berries in her brine. I can never find any juniper berries. I'm like, what the Me heck is juniper berry? Anyway. I, 
I don't know. But I, I can never know. find them. Even at the cat <laughs> store, they don't have them. But I'll put up a brine solution. And then I have, you can get a brining bag such mm -hmm. as this at Walmart, Kroger. Mm -hmm. I got one linked below in the description. I got box. two. And, you, and two of them come in the kit. Mm -hmm. And you put the bag inside the big container that you're going to use. And then you fill the bag that way. It kind of helps reduce that cross-contamination mm -hmm. that Shell was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And then once you get everything in there, you tie the bag up with a little loop on it. And then you set it in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Set it in the refrigerator. Absolutely. Set it in the refrigerator. I have seen several videos where the YouTube creator put their turkey in brine and they put it in a cooler with a bunch of ice. Mm -hmm. And if that's all you have and what you have to do, then that's what you have to do. But Health and Human Services, Department of Agriculture suggests putting it in the refrigerator because that keeps it at a constant steady temperature. Whereas if you put it in a cooler with ice, the temperature could drop lower than what they would prefer. And then Dana wants to know how long do you brine your turkeys? I will brine mine overnight. Like I'll try to, to brine it anywhere from eight to 12 hours. I try to put mine in the brine probably the morning prior to Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So maybe Wednesday morning I'll have it in mm -hmm. and then it stays in the brine. And I cook my turkey overnight uh, well, mom, Thanksgiving and I do it overnight. I put it in there on the hot oven and then turn it down before I go to bed. And by the time I get up, we're waking up to the smell of turkey. So, uh, and that works. But I, I use my apple cider mm -hmm. as a brine. And uh, I like apple cider. I put in cinnamon sticks, mm -hmm. of course, the peppers and uh, whole garlic and uh, uh, all those good seasonings, the onions, all of that. But there's just something about that apple cider that just yeah. sweetens that turkey. And uh, it really does an excellent job. So we've got a question from Ronnie, and she said mm -hmm. she's never heard of brining a turkey. So now, Dana, we did, hopefully we answered your question. Uh, anywhere from 8 to 12 hours, <clears throat> that you put the turkey in, into brine. And then Ronnie said she never heard of it. Is that something we should be doing? Well, it all depends. I was looking at a website earlier and they said, don't bother brining your turkey. If you get a good quality turkey, like a butterball or something like that, because they've already injected it with some different spices and juices mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But if I'm getting it 39 cents a pound, it may not be one of the better quality turkeys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't like a dry turkey. And a lot of people used to not like turkey because turkeys were always dry. Well, if you mm -hmm. brine them and you don't overcook them, they're not dry. So I will brine mine because I like the moisture and the salt solution that, and Leona, you know, this being a uh, you know retired science teacher, but that salt solution that you put in the brine helps to draw moisture into the yeah, earth. Too. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. It really does. Also, something that uh, we probably, if you don't have and you have an opportunity to pick one up, that's a meat thermometer. And uh, that is so important. I see Denise has hers ready to go. Well, I, I like to have show and tell to break up my talking head. <laughs> <laughs> so meat thermometer. But um, a meat thermometer is something that you really need. That's the only way you'll know, other than Butterball, who's going to have his little pop up. And and I have to say, I have cooked a Butterball turkey for over 40 years, and it has never failed me. Mm -hmm. And uh, But um, just in case you have a turkey that doesn't have that, mm -hmm. then you certainly need the thermometer. And when you're using that thermometer, that turkey is supposed to be 165 degrees internal temperature. So you mm -hmm. want to stick that thermometer down in the turkey, not touching a bone, but you stick right. it down in and not touching a bone in the deepest part, like maybe in the thigh or deep in the breast, but not mm -hmm. touching the a bone. meaty part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a meaty part. And then you want to see it rise to 165 degrees. Now, this mm -hmm. one article said you can let it go to 160 take it out of the oven, 
tinge it with aluminum foil and it'll continue to cook for about another five degrees. But I I don't do that. I don't like mine like that. I, and in fact, I even err on the side of 167. Yeah. So that and I'm still going to tint it when when it comes out. But um, I want my I want to be able if you don't have a thermometer, this is how, you know, you just go to either to either one of the legs and you start to turn them. If you can turn them easily, mm -hmm. then you know that it's done. But if you have any resistance whatsoever, that turkey's not ready. It's not ready to come out of the oven. Okay, so we're getting some questions about the brining. And so Myra says we've brought back her love of homemaking. It is undervalued and much needed. And so Nefertiri says, so you, the brine takes place after the turkey has been completely thawed. Yes. Yes. After the turkey has been completely thawed mm -hmm. and you do whatever you're going to do to it. Like if I'm going to rinse it, I'm going to rinse mm -hmm. it first and then I'm going to put it into, and then I'm going to open up my bag. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open my bag, put my bag down in my big container. Then I'm going to put the turkey down in and then I'm going to add my, uh, no, I'm going to add my bag, put the water and my different things that I'm going to put into the uh, container. And then I'm going to gently place the turkey down in the brine, in the brine solution and let it rise and cover the turkey. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so yes, you do it after you completely thaw it. Cal said she doesn't brine hers and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Kim says, apple cider vinegar or just apple cider? Apple, apple cider. cider. <laughs> yeah, apple cider, not apple cider vinegar, apple mm -hmm. cider. And then uh, Biddy, whose name is Dana, wants to know mm -hmm. what does brining actually do? And it draws moisture into the turkey. Moisture and flavor. Oh, yes, and flavor. Mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the turkey. And Tam said, Barney makes a difference in moist, yeah, and holds in the seasoning. So, yeah, it does. Ronnie cooks hers in a turkey oven bag. I've done that. And you cook them in an oven bag, they cook so much more quickly. They do. They do. You don't have to wait forever. And they, they're nice and moist, too, because it's like that bag was like a self-basting. Mm -hmm. It browns. It does everything it's supposed to in that bag. Now, let me ask you, how many of you have cooked a turkey inside of a brown paper bag. Hmm. This was pre-cooking bags. How many of you have put that turkey in a in a brown paper bag? Not me. You haven't? Not heard of it. Yes. And uh, in, before there was a, a brining bag and a cooking bag, you put the turkey in a brown paper bag, put everything inside of the turkey and fold it up on the end, sit it inside of your baking pan and into the oven it goes. And uh, when you, you're finished, you'll open that bag up and it is delicious. It's brown, it's perfect. Well, what about the paper bag itself, though? Because I'm thinking, you know, I think wet. because of the the moisture, it it holds up. It really does. It holds up. In fact, depending on your setting, it may be that it might get just a little bit brown itself, but it never catches on fire because your oven's not going to be that high. Not I high didn't think the oven would that the, the bag would catch on fire, but I thought it would get mm -hmm. real wet and just kind of disintegrate. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. So Kat says she's never heard of cooking turkey in a paper bag, but she knows fish can be cooked that way. Yeah. Uh, now, I have to admit, I did it in an electric oven. I have not tried it in a gas oven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might have to be a little more careful with that. But in an electric stove, it, it worked. Well, you're now an OG because Tam says only an OG would have done that. <laughs> and now you can let your, your daughter know you got street cred. You're an OG. An OG. <laughs> and then Sue says she did that about 35 years ago. Okay? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
that was before we had all of these bags. Mm -hmm. Cal said, would it burn in an electric stove? No, that's that's what I had for years, an electric oven. Now, Miss C says she's heard of it, but she's never tried it. I, I typically set my oven on about 325, and that's because I'm going to let it cook all night. Mm -hmm. So while it's hot, it's not you know, at 425 or whatever, you know, a lot of people cook their turkeys uh, because they're trying to cook it within a three to four hour time period. I wouldn't advise using a bag for that. But uh, if you're going to do a slow cook, mm -hmm. then you could, do, you could certainly use the bag. Okay. So uh, Kim wants to know if we've ever cooked a turkey breast or turkey tenderloins only. And yes, I've cooked both of those. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Turkey breast, I cook it the same mm -hmm. way I do my turkey. I, yes. I eat it the same way. Yep. Same way. Yeah. Same way. And what I do is I um, rub it real well with some herb butter. Mm -hmm. And I like to, to drizzle a little honey over the top after I've done my mm -hmm. salt and pepper thing on the inside mm -hmm. and then on the outside and then rubbed it with the herb butter. I'll drill, dribble some honey over the top. It really helps it to brown and gives it a nice flavor. Mm -hmm. And um, when I roast my turkey in my old fashioned roasting pan, <laughs> I'll put a layer of carrots, onions, celery at mm -hmm. the bottom and then set the turkey on top of that. And so mm -hmm. that takes place of that wire rack that you get in the roasting pans you get today. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put a quart of water in the bottom of the roasting pan. So mm -hmm. it gives you additional broth and juices and it's just so good. And then you save those juices to make gravy or put them in the freezer and then you can make dressing at another time without that's having true. that's true we also uh, sometimes use a bottle of wine, white wine and um, so we'll have the vegetables in have all the seasonings in put the meat on top and drizzle uh, an entire bottle of wine in the and turkey. then use over the turkey and then use the drippings. Once the turkey is finished and the drippings are at the bottom, pour that into a saucepan and make the gravy from that. Oh, I like that idea. I might have to mm -hmm. try that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Sue says brown paper bag almost works like when she uses parchment paper for cooking fish. Oh, okay. yes, yes. And then Deb says she uses her blue turkey roaster they got as a wedding gift over 45 years ago. Oh, <laughs> well, like I said, mm -hmm. I got the one I had was my husband's mother and mm -hmm. uh, we've been married almost 50 years. And I don't mm -hmm. know how long Mrs. Jordan had it before we got it. So, yeah, I had my mom's for years and uh, I don't know what happened to that pan. I don't know if Conway did some kind of project with it in the garage or what. <laughs> I'm going to disappear. If he's like your husband, he very well could have. <laughs> so Sue's used a brown paper bag in an electric oven. Mm -hmm. uh, Kat says those um, turkey roasters, those old fashioned ones, reminds her of a baby bathtub. Yes, it does. And then uh, Nefertiri said her mom cooked turkeys overnight, got up to mm -hmm. baste it all night long. Mm -hmm. she does the same. I don't, I, I put mine on that morning. I'll cook it for about three, three and a half hours, depending upon mm -hmm. the size. I'll baste it a couple of times in the beginning. But since I do have that old fashioned turkey roaster and it has a lid, I can put the lid on it. And that kind of helps to keep the moisture in. And mm -hmm. that extra quart of water in the bottom of the roaster just kind of bathes it in. Um, mm -hmm. in self base. Itself. Mm, that it sounds up. good. You do like you suggested and like crisp it up just a little bit. So Yum. So Kim says cooking wine. No, just reg whatever kind of wine you like to drink, that's the wine you're going to use. And uh, whatever your white wine of choice is. Okay. And Mary, I'm going to ask my sister who does a prayer circle to pray for your continuous healing and good mm -hmm. days and all of you ladies and gents who are out there, you guys kind of send up prayers and good vibes for mm -hmm. Mary. So let's see. Wendy said her mom rubbed Crisco all over and based it every half hour. So golden and crispy. I think mine mm -hmm. used to leave her in all night, but I put butter with like thyme and all. Mm -hmm. We did butter. All over the top of it. So, wow. 
Huh. So this white wine in July collards. Oh. The Cajun cook recipe. I have to try that. I haven't tried that. Oh, in your collars, in her collars. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so white wine in her collars. I have okay. to try that. Well, um, Nefertiri says, what's the purpose of the roasting rack? So that the turkey doesn't stick to the bottom. Mm -hmm. It can stick mm -hmm. like the, the back and all of that meat there can stick to the and get scorched on the bottom of the pan if it's in there too long. So you set it on top of your carrots and celery and onions or the roasting rack and it, it mm -hmm. takes care of that. Okay, let's see, is that all our questions? We talked about basting. We talked about the mistakes. Oh, stuffing, let's talk about that. That's something we need to address. So first of all, from my perspective and what I've learned, when you talk about stuffing, stuffing goes in the bird, dressing is on the side. Exactly. You to dress it up. But stuffing is not exactly recommended anymore by they, Nefetiri, and the they <laughs> is the Department of U.S., um, the Department of Agriculture and U.S. Health and Human Services because it is believed that, well, they've done some research on it, that with if you stuff the turkey with like your cornbread stuffing or whatever, and you stuff the cavities, that the temperature doesn't get to 165 degrees in there where that stuffing is. And so it may not heat up enough to cook thoroughly. And you could end up with some germs and bacteria growing in there and end up with food poisoning. Or so they're suggested not to do that. Or if you stuff it and you cook it longer to make sure it's cooked, well, then the turkey can end up dry. What do you want to add to that, Leona? I think you're absolutely right. Um, I used to very early on put the stuffing into the turkey because that was the way my husband's mother did it. Yeah, did and, uh, you know, it's funny. The irony of it is, is that sometimes they would talk about the stuff. Oh, the stuffing was so good, you know, because all the flavors had gone through it. But then they would also in the next voice talk about how dry the breast was. And so one goes along with the other because you're cooking it long enough for the stuffing to, you know, cook it completely. And so, um, I just stopped doing it. I didn't do it. And, and I don't do it. Now, what my mom would do is that she would cook the stuffing in the turkey, but then she literally would take a spoon, take it all out, put it into a dish and then put it into the oven just to make sure because she liked for the stuffing to have a little brownness to the top, a little crunch. So she would take it out and bake it for a few minutes and finish it up. But um, at this point, I do it all. I, I prepare dressing, not stuffing. Happy mail. I have happy mail. I went to the post office and I got this nice little box and I thought, what could this be? And look what was inside this lovely oh, pretty. It's an Erin Condren notebook. Oh, how nice. And so I don't know how Debbie Joe knows this, but there were two in the box, one for me and one for Mickey Blue Skies. Now, Mickey Blue Skies is a notebook fanatic. She loves pretty paper. Like, I love pretty plates and dishes. <laughs> like, pretty paper and pretty notebooks and pretty bags and things mm -hmm. like that. So she got to pick which one she wanted. And then and this was the one I wanted. So I was glad she didn't That's pick this pretty. one. But this is a lovely Erin Condren notebook. And mm -hmm. she just sent it in thanks because she won the handheld food saver. And I'm like, well, I appreciate that. So I wanted to be sure to share that. And then I also got some happy mail from another person who sent me some pictures of her family. Oh. And you guys are probably wondering, well, why is she sending you pictures of her family? Well, some of you know that my son works in film and television. And so one of the things that he's always doing is like looking for pictures to use on the set. So oh, yeah. sometimes nice. he'll say, like, do you have pictures from 1950? You got any mm -hmm. pictures from the 40s or something like that? And so then we'll go look at mm -hmm. the family photo albums to see if we've got any pictures. 
Mm -hmm. And oh, that's cute. So one of the questions that a lot of people will ask, like on my videos, is how do you handle memorabilia? What I have all these pictures and what do I do with them? Mm -hmm. Especially if I've kept all the ones that I want. And so I said, well, you could send them to me. My son uses these kind of things in his work and the pictures can and the pictures can be used and continue um, res and used respectfully. Mm -hmm. So like uh, in the movie Selma, there's a picture of my mom and me and my sister Levina on the wall. We were little, we were like five years old. We'd gone to, in one of those little photo booths that they take mm -hmm. where three people get in. There's a picture of us on the wall there. Oh, great news. So you guys have been watching the Wonder Years on mm -hmm. ABC. One of my quilts is going to be in the office of the father on the Wonder Years. I was just sending the paperwork regarding that today. So oh. it's like, like that. So he accepts pictures that um, can be used in different um, films and things, and they, they're used respectfully. So they live on mm -hmm. respectfully. So she sent them to that's me. Nice. Today. So now I got to send her a release form, but still. So that's my happy mail for today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I've covered everything. Leona, do, can you think of any, do. any more questions? I don't see any more. Right. We have covered a lot. Then it's time for the lightning round. Yay! And tonight the lightning round has a twist because I am on the hot seat. And Leona's been planning this all week and giggling, so I don't know what she's got planned. <laughs> well, I've got some questions for you, Denise. Right. Now, knowing that you are a lady who handles and rocks that house, these questions are for you. First of all, what is your favorite room in the house? Oh, the kitchen. All right, the kitchen. Um, do you like texting or talking? Talking. I'm old okay. I'll pick up the phone and call you. <laughs> What's your favorite holiday, Christmas or Halloween? Christmas. All right. Which cookie, chocolate chip or oatmeal? Oatmeal with raisins. With raisins, no nuts? And pecans. Okay. Now, your most influential person that is not related to you. My fundamentals of nursing teacher, Mrs. James Etta Petway. She was oh. and just kind of helping me grow and mature and think about some things. I've never forgotten her. That's sweet. That's sweet. Now, oh, this one you'll like. What is your favorite letter of the alphabet and why? Oh, hmm, that's a hard one. I'd have to say it's either A or E. Um. No, I'm thinking probably Z, because when you're playing Scrabble, Z is worth some points. <laughs> A and E are only one point, but Z, you can get some points for that. Okay. And last but not least, what is your favorite cleaning tool? Oh, hmm. My favorite cleaning tool. Gosh, that's hard. I'm trying to think. Is it my, um, you know what? I think it's my uh, Dyson stick vacuum cleaner. Because mm -hmm. it just really makes vacuuming so much easier. Either that or the sponge that I use to clean up. Well, not the sponge, but like the dishcloth that I use to clean up in the kitchen. Because, you know, you're mm -hmm. always wiping down the counters, the stove, mm -hmm. the dishes with it. But probably my Dyson stick vac. All right. Good job. Good job. Oh my goodness, you had some hard ones. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ronnie. This was fun, Leona. This really was fun. It this was. Really was fun. You're going to have to co-host with me again. All right. I'd be happy to. And before I go, let me remind you to do several things. One, download my free printable on how to get your house ready for the holidays. I will link it in the description box below. And two, visit Leona Dooley at Ebony, Ivy, and Time with Leona Dooley so that you can check out her Thanksgiving playlist. I will link it in the description box below. 
and three, check out my Thanksgiving 101 playlist where I show you how to roast a turkey, how to make cornbread dressing, how to make candy sweet potatoes, holiday green beans, and so many other things you just may want on your holiday table. I will link it with the i card above and in the description box below. And last but not least, don't forget to visit us at www.aprondiva.com for our early bird Black Friday sales starting on Friday, November 4th. I will see you next time.